because we also have this uh, patio coming right off of that back family room. So this is going to be a great piece of work too. Right, and this is made out of pavers. So they chose this paver. I mean, we've seen the story on this in continuous production for 100 years, and it's a good match for our chimneys on the house. And I use them all the time in walks and patios, but they come with some issues. Which are what? Take a look over here. Whenever I'm doing a walkway or a patio, I want to use a modular brick. Now these brick here are not s &H pavers. And by a modular brick, I mean well, twice the width is equal to the length. Oh, yeah, so See how tight those fit together? No perfect. cutting, nothing needed on right. those. Now these are s &H pavers. Do the same thing with those. All right, so if I set that up there. Put, oh wow, look at that. It's right. a huge gap. Right, and in order to make that work in the field, there's gonna have to have a lot of adjustment on okay. our part. But they are committed to using the s &H brick. Right, so we talked about making a running bond pattern. You can see this is the s &H pavers. Yep. And they fit in pretty tight this way. You just got to watch the lines on this because of different thickness and you'll have a nice straight one. Very few cuts in that. Okay. But they didn't like that pattern. They didn't? Nope. What they liked was a herringbone. So this is a herringbone made out of modular brick, not the s &H pavers. You can see how tight the pattern is right. and how few cuts there are involved. So this is a cut right here, and because they're modular, when you cut that brick, it's actually in half. You can use both halves. Use both, yep. All right, but they don't want the modular. Nope. So they want s &H in herringbone. Right. Now here's a classic herringbone pattern, and you can see how you have some openings in the brick to yep. make it stay on the herringbone pattern. Okay, and in this case the herringbone is defined by these things coming to, uh, into each other at a 90, 90 degree, degree angle, angle. Yep. for this pattern. So we've got some cuts to make and maybe those are going to be irregular. Right, and they may be irregular in size so you're not going to get the yield you would like cutting a brick in half. Is this what we're going with? No, they wanted to make it a little more interesting. Oh, good heavens. Okay, now we've changed to s &H pavers herringbone pattern on a 45. 45, which I can see right here, but why is that more difficult than the 90? Well, you're going to have to meet into all these pieces. Every one of those has right. to be cut in. And they may even get smaller as we go, depending on how it works out. So now we're going to have these little cuts right here. Oh, yeah. Anything else? Did they tell you that you couldn't work with a saw or you can't use shovels and you got to work at night? <laughs> no. But let me show you how we get started. First thing is we came in the patio area and we dug it out 12 to 18 inches deep of all the loamy material and got rid of that. Then we put in some stone and compacted that. Now we're using crusher run and stone dust mixed together. We're going to rake it out. We're going to pack it. And we're going to get up three inches below our finished grade line. All right. For this patio, Kevin, I've set up a main line. Now, this main line is at a 90 degree angle to the house. Yep. And it is exact grade we want to have with pitch going down that way for the water to run off. Okay. So we have this in place. The next thing we're going to do is spread out some stone dust. Now, stone dust is different than crusher run because it has no big stones in it. So when we lay it out and compact it, we're going to have a perfectly flat bed to lay the brick on. Okay. You see, you've got the rails in there already, the metal pipe, and then you've got your metal screed right here. Right. So we're just going to take and stand that screed up, run it down the rails, and it'll leave us the perfect height to set the brick. So we just have to take, put the brick in like that, give them a little tap, and we're good to go. We really put a lot of work in the base. We got everything compacted. It's not going to move and it's up to the perfect grade. So we have the stone dust set in place and we're just going to start dropping the pavers in. They're just going to need a little tap to set themselves in place and they'll be great. So you've got a course here of the bricks set on their side. That's a sailor course and that's to keep the brick from falling off the edge of the patio. Right. And because of this base, because of the prep, this is going to go quickly. It's going to go real quick. Now, when the patio's done and all the brick are laid, the next step is to put in polymeric sand, and that's this material here. So what we do is we take and lay it out on the brick. And you love this stuff because it actually, I mean, it's got a little bit of concrete in it. It's great. It takes and hardens up, keeps ants and insects out, and even weeds from growing. And that's going to fill all of these joints for us. Right, and the key is to get it all filled in and make sure it's really down in where it belongs before yep. you get it wet. With it swept in really well into the brick, we're going to give them a shower of water. We're going to let them rinse. 
And that helps it all set up, right? It settles it all down in. And what we're going to do is let that sit for about 10 minutes. And we're going to hit it again. Nice. All right. So how long do you think to lay this entire patio? Probably one more whole day here with no one bothering us. It'll be all done. All right. It's going to look sweet, Roger. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.